Welcome back. Today we are going to recap a movie called Lost Bullet. The main protagonist of the movie is called Lino. Lino is a small-time criminal and gifted mechanic for high-speed cars. Lino works closely with his younger brother, Quinton. In the beginning, we see Lino and Quinton in a car about to blast through the door of a jewelry store to commit a robbery. Lino fortifies his vehicle with a ramp and an injection diverter that is strong enough to blast through the store and three walls of concrete, and end up on the other side of the streets. Lino gets stuck and cannot get out. Quinton tries to help him out but hears the sirens from the police getting closer. Lino asks Quinton to save himself before the cops arrive. Quinton escapes and Lino gets arrested. While in prison, Lino is approached by Officer Karras. Karras is the deputy head of a police squad determined to stop a gang of drug dealers that traffic narcotics in the city using fast fortified cars to move their drugs. Karras gets permission from his boss, Moss, to absorb Lino in his team due to his knowledge about cars. Karras shows Lino a picture of police cars being destroyed while chasing a gang of drug dealers. He offers Lino a chance to work with the police as a mechanic to help improve the durability of police cars. Seeing this as a second chance, Lino agrees to become the mechanic of the police and enhance police cars to withstand high-speed crashes. Karas's team comprises of Oreski, who is next in command after Karas. Then there was Marco who is very close to Oreski. And last but not least, Julia, the only woman in the squad. Lino loyally works for the police to modify and fortify police vehicles in such a way that they have no trouble chasing criminals with fast-paced cars. Charis and his team are able to dispose of some of the drug dealers and seize a considerable amount of drugs. But Karas is still not happy. Dissatisfied with just catching a few drug runners, Karas wants to catch the boss of the drug dealers and cut off supply from the top. At one of the crash sites, he recovers an air injection from the car of one of the drug dealers. He then recalls that he found a very similar device in Lino's car when he was caught robbing the jewelry store. When he questions Lino, Lino tells him that it must be his brother, Quinton, that is selling the device to the drug dealers. Having become friends since taking him in from prison, Lino agrees to help track down his brother and find out who he is working for. Charez promises Lino that Quinton would not get in trouble as he only wants to arrest the boss of the drug dealers. Charis and Lino set out to find and interrogate Quentin, to find out who he sold the injection diverter to. When Quinton sees Lino he is happy to see him out of jail but he quietly tells him to leave quickly before his employer arrives. They discover that Quinton is working for the drug dealers and they try to put him in Karaz's car to take him to the station for interrogation. But while they're at it, the drug dealers show up and try to scare Charis and Lino with their guns. As a scuffle unfolds, Karaz and Lino get the better of the drug dealers. And soon two other members of Karaz's squad arrive, Oreski and Marco. Karaz instructs Marco and Oreski to arrest the drug dealers while he and Lino take Quinton to his car. Just as they get inside Karaz's car to take Quentin to the police station, one of the cops, Oreski, shoots Karaz from point-blank range. While Karaz dies on the spot, Quinton tells Lino to run before they kill him. Lino runs and narrowly escapes from the cops. This reveals that the two other cops, Oreski and Marco, are corrupt cops who have been working with the drug dealers, and just when they realized that their secret was about to get out, they killed Karaz to cover their tracks. Luckily for Quinton, they are not aware that he is Lino's his brother. The bullet that was fired by Oreski goes through Charis and ends up stuck in the dashboard of the car. Oreski tells the drug dealers to bury Karaz and burn his car to get rid of all evidence. He and Marco set off to find Lino to kill him. Lino runs to the nearest shop to try and call Julia and tell her what happened. However, he gets arrested by some local cops. Lino goes to jail and informs them that he will only talk to Julia as she is the only cop that he can trust. The police put him in an interrogation room and call for Julia. While he is waiting, Oreski enters the room. He turns off the camera before talking. He cooks up a false story that Lino should tell to Julia when they interrogate him. He threatens to use Lino's criminal background against him and convince others that he killed Karas. Lino would be labeled as a cop killer and spend the rest of his life in prison. A desperate Lino knows that he has to try to escape. He eventually manages to remove his cuffs by using iron bars from under his chair. He then manages to fight off 10 police officers and make his escape through the back door. Meanwhile, Oreski has the drug dealers dispose of Karaz's burnt car with Karaz's burnt corpse next to an abandoned factory. He then shows up at the scene and tells Moss that it was Lino that killed Karaz. 
Moss and Julia are devastated at Karaz's death. Oreski and Marco pretend to be sad and console Julia. She had just lost her mentor and was devastated. They then meet secretly to plan their next move. Convinced that they had burnt all the evidence of their murder of Karaz, they plot to find and kill Lino. Meanwhile, Lino, having escaped from jail, tracks down Julia to try and convince her that it was in fact Oreski that killed Karaz and is framing him. Julia doesn't believe him and tries to arrest him. They get into a fight. Lino manages to cuff her to a police car. As Lino recovers, he sees the burnt car that Oreski had the drug dealers dispose with Karaz's dead body. He recalls that Karaz had a red car and this car was different. He realizes that Karaz's red car must be back at Quinton's workshop where Karaz was killed. The car serves as a crucial piece of evidence to prove his innocence, because when Oreski shot Charis, one of his bullets had penetrated the dashboard of the car. If he can find the car, forensics could then trace the bullet back to Oreski's gun. He tells Julia about the car and sets out to find it. He goes back to Quinton's workshop and sees Quinton and the drug dealers packing up to leave. The drug dealers still don't know that Lino and Quinton are brothers. Lino gets caught snooping around for a gun. The drug dealers put him in the trunk of a car to execute him. However, at the last minute, Quinton rams a car into the drug dealers to save his brother. As they run together, Quinton tells Lino that he knows where Karaz's car is hidden and can take him there. Quinton takes Lino to an isolated place where the car is hidden. First Quinton retrieves a bag of money he had stashed in one of the rooms. As he leaves the room to take Lino to the car, Marco shows up out of nowhere and shoots Quinton with a shotgun. A fight then erupts between Marco and Lino in the room. Quinton is pouring blood outside, staggering and crawling. Lino eventually gets the better of Marco and chains him to a desk. Lino walks outside to see that Quinton had crawled to die where the car was hidden. Lino finally finds the car, and now has to drive it to a forensics expert to prove his innocence. However, he was weary of Oreski and knew he would be determined to stop him. Lino uses his knowledge of cars to fortify the car and make it more durable. He modifies the car to make it capable of breaking through any obstacle that comes in its way. He attaches a massive steel guard on the car's front bumper and when a roadblock of cop cars tries to stop him, he breaks right through it with his invention. Unfortunately for Lino, despite his efforts to serve justice, Oreski manages to catch up with him. While Lino is busy pounding Oreski's face, he cleverly plants a hand grenade in the trunk of Lino's car. With this, Lino's only piece of evidence starts burning. Lino refuses to give up and drives the car to the garage. He reaches there just in time and manages to save the car. With the front still intact, the forensic team is able to retrieve the bullet from its dashboard and prove that it was Oreski who shot Karas. By this time, Oreski goes to his house to collect some money from a wardrobe. He takes one last look at his family through a window before going on the run. In the closing scene, we see Lino and Julia together. Lino finally gets to be a free man, and Charis's half-burnt car becomes his memorial.